This is the K98 from Womir, and I have never dealt with a keyboard that was built quite like this, an all acrylic chassis. I must say it's a very intriguing approach, and it does work quite well. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel, and I hope you've all been doing well. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Womir K98. Now before we jump into this review, I just briefly wanted to talk about Wamir. This is a brand that I had seen over on places like Gearbest or AliExpress, and if you shop for electronics from overseas markets, especially in China, then odds are you've probably heard of them. But they aren't too common here in North America, especially compared to known brands like Corsair, Razer, Logitech, and more, though they are fairly well known in the custom mechanical keyboard scene. Now just because they aren't too well known, doesn't necessarily mean they make cheap or inferior products. I mean, I reviewed two keyboards from Royal Clutch, and I found their build quality to be a lot better than some of the gaming keyboards I had used from known brands, and you'll see that the K98 from Wilmir also delivers. So to start off, I wanted to do a quick unboxing of the keyboard. This will show you guys what you can expect when it comes to things like packaging, and what are some cool and useful accessories they include in the box. The K98 comes inside a plain grey box, it has a skeletal photo of the keyboard on the front with some branding. At the bottom of the box you have some info in regards to the company's social media pages. The back of the box just has more of the same as what was on the front, so it would be nice of them to include a real photo of the keyboard rather than a skeletal photo and some info in regards to the features and the specs on the back which would also be informative for the customer. Opening up the box and I was glad to see some packing foam surrounding the keyboard. The keyboard itself comes wrapped in some plastic. Then you have a box that's full of some accessories. Wamir gives you some extra blue and red keycaps, which is pretty cool. So if you wanted to get customizing right out of the box, you can do just that. Along with that, they also give you a cleaning brush, which is really cool and handy. Take a look at your keyboard. I bet you'll see dust and debris between your keys. So this will help keep your keyboard nice and clean. There's also a keycap puller, but no switch puller, which kind of sucks. And you also have a white USB-C to Type-A cable. Next, I wanted to talk about the design of the keyboard, the build quality, and the aesthetics. The K98 is utilizing a custom 96% layout, also known as an 1800 layout. Out of all the various keyboard layouts I've tried, this one is hands down the best in my opinion, and most preferable. It essentially gives you an experience of a full-size keyboard but being considerably more compact. The K98 when compared to the RK96 from Royal Clutch is slightly larger. While the two keyboards look very similar, the RK96 is using a modified version of the 96% layout that makes it a bit more compact. As you can see with the K98, the major changes that the 96% layout offers are that it gets rid of those navigation keys that are quite redundant and usually found on the left hand side of the number pad on a full size keyboard. Instead, they've placed a few of those keys above the number pad, then the number pad and the arrow keys are then shifted over to the left to make it more compact with the rest of the board. There's also less spacing between the keys and the F row. As for the aesthetics, I really like the way this keyboard looks. I think the choice of colors for the keycaps was really nice, white and blue is a great combination. The color of the case and the frame is also blue, but the top and bottom of the plate have this translucent frosted glass appearance which I think looks really nice and gives off a very premium feel. And then combine that with the RGB LEDs, it looks really cool, and I'll talk about that more later on in the video. The sides of the board have a transparent blue color, and I have to say I'm really digging it. This kind of reminds me of back in the day when you'd have transparent electronics, and you could see the electronic components and PCB inside the device. I always thought it was such a cool look, and I wish more manufacturers would adopt this kind of look for their products. As for the build quality, this is where things get really interesting. The K98 is utilizing acrylic for its case and the frame. I've never used a keyboard before that had its case made out of acrylic before, but it feels super solid, there's no flex in the board, and it works quite well in regards to durability. If I had to describe it, have you ever felt a thick slab of tempered glass? Imagine you were dealing with something like that and it had some keys laid on top of it. I'd say it actually feels more solid than keyboards I've used which have had aluminum or metal plates. The acrylic didn't feel cheap, it didn't have that cheap plastic feeling, it didn't feel hollow, it feels robust and premium. So using acrylic as the main material to construct the case of the keyboard was a pretty smart idea, and I'm surprised that 
other manufacturers from mainstream brands never thought of this. If you were wondering how large this keyboard is, the K98 measures 15.4 inches wide, 5.5 inches in length, and is about 0.7 inches in height, which means it's not very portable, but I wouldn't really call it a very large keyboard by any means. We don't have to do a teardown of the board since the sides are see-through, and we can see if they've added any foam or dampening material. Unfortunately, there isn't any foam at the bottom of the case, nor is there any silencing material for the plate. So between the switches and the PCB, all you have is the acrylic plate. The keycaps that Wamir have decided to go with for the K98 are a putting style. They are PBT keycaps, however only the top portion of the keys are double shot, whereas the bottom half is just a single layer. This definitely looks cool and is pretty nice and it's got a smooth texture, but compared to full double shot PBT keycaps, they don't feel quite as premium, but I'd say they're still far better than some of the cheap ABS keycaps. Aesthetically, they match with the rest of the theme this keyboard is using, with that translucent appearance for the bottom half, so it makes sense that they would go with this. I also didn't have any complaints about the font either, it's all fairly standard and legible, which is really all I care about anyway. The one thing that did bother me was that there are no secondary functions printed on the keys. Since this is using a compact design, some of the keys that were omitted should have been integrated into existing keys and can only be accessed when you hold down the function key and that corresponding keys. I had to refer to the manual a lot to change things like the volume or the RGB effects. And then another huge downside was that this keyboard doesn't have any separate indicators for things like caps lock or num lock. Now I've used keyboards before which don't have a dedicated LED indicator for when those modes are turned on, but if they were activated, the caps lock would turn white or red for example. Here that doesn't happen, and the only way to know if the caps lock is on is if you start typing and then notice that the keys are all capitalized. It's like Wamir got too invested in making the keyboard look nice, but then forgot some of the basic functionality of the keyboard while they were at it. Let's talk about the included switches that this keyboard is using. The Wamir K98 ships with Gateron Brown switches, so already out of the box you're getting a pretty decent quality switch. These Gateron Browns are tactile switches, they've got a nice bump and give good feedback compared to some of the other clones I've tried on the market. They have an actuation force of 55 grams, 2 millimeters of pre-travel, and 4 millimeters of total travel distance. They are slightly scratchy out of the box, and they have a bit of spring ping, but nothing too drastic, and isn't something that a bit of loop can't fix. Now if you are interested in modding this keyboard with your own switches, then you'll be glad to know that the PCB that K98 uses is hot swappable, and it supports both 3-pin and 5-pin switches. Which is excellent, as now you've got a wide variety of aftermarket switches to choose from, and have the capability of simply just dropping them in without soldering. And while we're on that note, be on the lookout as I'll have a separate modding video for this keyboard coming out sometime in the near future. If you're wondering how the keyboard sounds, here is a typing test. After hearing the typing test, my thoughts are that while the keyboard doesn't sound terrible, I think there is a lot of room for improvement. The lack of sound dampening material really makes the keyboard have a lighter pitched and clackier sound. It doesn't really sound as deep as I thought it would have, so that is something I will be addressing in my modding video. Also the stabilizers don't sound very good at all. They have quite a bit of rattle to them, despite being slightly factory lubed. You can see they do wobble quite a bit. When it comes to how the board feels when typing on it, it feels pretty decent. The thick and solid acrylic body really makes it a joy to type on, there's no flex on the keyboard itself, and it gives pretty good feedback, it gives a very solid feel. Turning the keyboard around and at the bottom we can see that it has 4 rubber feet, with the ones on the top being significantly larger, and in the middle you can see a long rubber pad. I wish they had given us some way to adjust the thickness of the rubber feet, because I like to use my keyboards with the kick feet stands at max height, and I like to have my keyboard on a profound angle. However, the feet of the K98 just aren't thick, and it honestly feels like as if it's laying flat. I found that to be quite a bit uncomfortable, and there isn't really any included wrist rest either, so that could have at least been included to help compensate for the lack of height adjustment. 
You'll also have noticed that there are no toggle switches, no USB dongles, and this is because the keyboard doesn't have any wireless capability whatsoever. Which was a bit of a disappointment, considering it does cost slightly more than the RK96, which supports both 2.4GHz and Bluetooth. I get that they have to cut some costs somewhere, acrylic does cost significantly more than AVS plastic per pound, maybe at least adding Bluetooth or at least one wireless method of connectivity could go a long way for the user. Along with that, you can see that on the sides, the top, there aren't any sort of additional ports for USB pass-through. All you have is just one USB-C port for the cable, and that's it. Moving on, and I want to circle back to the aesthetics of the keyboard, but this time focus on the RGB lighting. With the combination of the acrylic body, the frosted top surface, and the putting keycaps, the K98 puts on an absolute light show. Not only does the PCB have LEDs to light up the keycaps, but there are some LEDs alongside the acrylic case, which means you get even more lighting around the whole keyboard, and it looks really cool. Since this is an RGB keyboard, you can customize the colors you want, and not only that, you can customize the type of lighting effects. Along with that, on the fly, you can adjust the colors by holding down the function key, and then pressing page down. Pressing page up changes the color of the acrylic case. You can also adjust things like the speed of the effects, the direction, brightness by pressing the corresponding combination of keys. If you want to go more in depth with lighting effects, you can also download their software and that will allow you to do just that. However, keep in mind it only works for Windows at this time. So that basically covers my review for the Wumir K98. Where this keyboard lacks features like wireless connectivity, it makes up for in areas like build quality, RGB lighting, and the inclusion of better switches along with higher quality putting keycaps. For $90 US, I think they've got the price point at a good mark. It's not a keyboard that would break the bank and gives you quite a lot of value for the money. The inclusion of a hot swappable PCB will allow the user to customize the keyboard with better switches down the road. If you are interested in picking one up, I'll drop an affiliate link in the video description. While that's all I have to say for this review, we're not done with the K98 just yet. I have a feeling we're going to have quite a bit of fun when modding this keyboard for an even better experience. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.